On today's episode of SEO Lunch, give your website a routine physical with our look at content audits. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of SEO Lunch. I'm your host, Dan, and SEO Lunch is your weekly look at search engine optimization tricks, inbound marketing tips, and other resources to help you in your website and content creation needs. As always, folks, this episode is brought to you by our Embrace WP service. Embrace WP is month-by-month priority WordPress support, including web development, SEO assistance, performance reviews, updates, backups, and more. Check us out today at embracewp.com. So the other day I talked about evergreen SEO. It was one of our recent episodes of the show. We have an article for it as well. And that was more passive content. What we're talking about today is the content audit or what is a content audit? Because a lot of people are going to be posting content that does change. If you own, for example, maybe a a tour guide company or you're doing something like us with SEO or web design, things change constantly. And a lot of the articles you write are going to be old fast. So if you're looking at me strange, asking what is a content audit? A content audit is basically a look back at what you've previously created. So all the posts you've created, all the articles on your website or website, and taking a look at them and saying, what's working? What's not? What do I need to change on each of these articles? Are there new links I have from before that I didn't have when I first wrote the article? Basically like a checkup, a very qualitative checkup on your website. A perfect example, uh, it's kind of cold here right now in New England, so there's a a blizzard coming, so we're going to use a lot of winter analogies today, if if you don't mind. So a perfect example of this is going to be winter clothes, right? Let's say I write an article about the best clothes for the winter or something like that. The next winter comes. That article is still posted from a year ago. But there's been this great advancement with, with goose down in coats or something that some new material they put in to, to help insulate your coat, right? You might want to go back in that content audit to that old post about the winter coat and add maybe even a link to a page, another post you have that talks about the new advancement, or just simply add it. Add to that content piece, oh, there are these new goose down jackets, things like that. Um, it's a really, really helpful, helpful tip. Um, This is really, really great when you're doing sort of e-commerce or trying to get a call to action out of people. Because as you add content or add things to your website, you can start going back and calling to them. You have this whole treasure trove of content available to you already, you know. Let's say you have a few articles that get thousands of hits a month or something like that. Just people are visiting it left and right. And a lot of them aren't working. You know, you can go back to those articles that are working. And you can maybe paste a link to your newer, newest product or add something that says, oh, by the way, we have this now and add a link to that product. So content notice are really great for maximizing the content you have and going back and making changes. In our case, you know, an SEO thing might be different six months from now. And while with video like this, it's really tough to go back and edit unless I put in some microphone over my, my voice and muted what I have now. I really can't do that here. But with an article, I can just delete the text and add new text or just add an edit and say, by the way, this changed. You might want to be aware of it. In WordPress, this is going to be um, signified by categories and tags because you're going to have all of these articles. Let's say you have thousands of articles or thousands of posts you've created on your WordPress powered website or your content managed website. And what you can do is you can create a tag. In this case, we'll create a tag called winter close. And we'll call it winter dash close for the the slug for the tag, right? And you can do that for as many tags as you want. We're doing it on a very clean website, so it's the only one on here. What you can do from then is when you want to do this content audit, it'll be very simple. Let's say that goose down jacket thing happens, right? You can then just go to your tags, search by your tags, and any article you've created with winter close as a tag in it will be indexable right there. You just click on that, it'll tell you the number of posts there, and you can just go right through those articles and edit them and tweak them. So it's a really great way to manage content so you don't get too far ahead of yourself, where you have a thousand articles all over the place, simply sorted by post date, and now you have no idea what to do with it. You can also use categories too, but categories tend to be used for higher things like you know creating category pages or being able to have category blog rolls and things like that that are very easy to, to read and look at.
So tags are a really good, a really easy way. The other great thing about tags is that you can have a ton of tags for one item. So it could be winter clothes, jackets, goose down, whatever your tags are on your website. If you do outdoor apparel, for example, that you can use for that, which is really great. If you're on a budget um, and you don't want to content out necessarily all a thousand pages, a really, really great tip that, that I have for you is to look into your Google Analytics. We help set up people with Google Analytics, but if you're looking to help with Google using Google Analytics, you look at your top posts, right? The ones that are just hitting. People are just reading this one left and right. The, you know, these are the, the 15 or 20 posts that people are just coming back to over and over and over again. Go to those posts specifically on your WordPress side or where, whatever you're using and then edit them from there. That way you can keep tabs on those articles that are getting the most traction because people are obviously looking for that, not other things you might have. Um, you can put in calls to action on those pages because you're saying, hey, a lot of people are using this. I want to put a call to action here. Another thing you can do if you're on a budget is focus on doing evergreen SEO or evergreen content, which I talked about last time. So I don't want to get into too much here. You can always link back to that. But what evergreen SEO basically is, is just content that doesn't need to be updated as often. It's like a historical or informational piece, something that won't change very much over time. Um, yeah. Um, oh, a perfect example of what you could do with Evergreen SEO using the Blizzard example would be um, like if you're a roofing company I have here, um, you can write a fun article about the Blizzard of 78, you know, which in today's world would have done $1.86 billion of damage, according to Wikipedia, if it happened today, which is crazy. Make a fun article about that and link it back to you need a strong roof in the case of a roofing company, right? So a lot of cool stuff you can do with Evergreen SEO, actionable or active SEO um, and active content. Um, yeah, let, let me know what you think. Go to the comments below. Post, subscribe to us as always with the big old red subscribe button on YouTube or go to slocumstudio.com slash subscribe to subscribe to all of this great content as it comes out. Again, this is brought to you by our Embrace WP service, month by month priority WordPress website support with updates, backups, performance reviews, and more. So check that out folks today at embracewp.com. Thanks a lot, guys.